Hello and welcome back. Another episode here of Second Chance Heroes, uh, the making of by Rocket City Studios. I'm lead level designer Eli Platt, and I'll be walking you through today through the editor view of the second Tanks for Nothing level, which is the fourth level in the bunker. All right, so here we've got our safe room next to our football helmet, and you venture out of here and you cut back across this open area, and you're into the tanks. You climb up on this scaffolding, and now you're up top, and you have some options. Um, so really, when they were building this level, they wanted to uh, do everything as somewhat of an airplane hangar. And uh, then we decided that we were going to do a level that was an airplane hangar, and so we wanted a warehouse. And so I tried to try to come and think of how to make that interesting, how to do the elevation changes like I had done in the Hobo Colony. And I decided that instead of just using this stuff to build regular scaffolding, I thought of like really big factories where machines are so large the machines have scaffolding on them and platforms and test laboratories where you can take samples and do tests, you know, without having to go back to a laboratory. And so that's what I tried to build here. Where we've got like desks and computers and filing cabinets underneath of other things. We've got this this big network of shelving. Um, so one of the cool things also once you get up here is this set piece back here where I've had a tank drive into and knock over this first shelf which has then collapsed. And let me let me isolate this out for you actually. View invert selection. Edit. Let's see. View hide selected. And then I'll just grab this. There. This is all in the foreground view. Hide selected. And so I've driven this tank. Well, I haven't driven the tank, but I've placed the tank so that it is knocking over this first shelf, which is collapsed into the second shelf, which is collapsed into the third shelf. And there's a shelf that's slid and fallen off. Excuse the group node here. That's what that is. It denotes that that's the center point of a group. Uh, and then that shelf has fallen in, and so it's got this whole effect. And you'll see, like, all these little boxes are, like, wedged in and stacked on top of each other and knocked out of the way and not intersecting each other in a way that doesn't make any sense. And, like, all of these barrels have been pushed back towards the edge, and one of them is over here, and it's fallen off. And all of this, I don't know if you saw... I don't know if you actually saw the video earlier when I was talking about this in the beer levels, but all of this was done by hand. It wasn't done in a physics engine. So we don't have like physics pl plugins where we can push over an object and make it physics interactable, and then once it comes to a rest, save the position of that object. I know that's a method that's, that's used in maybe some other games, but uh, in ours, it was a measure of just going in and building this all out by hand and making it look as natural as possible. And so I think when you see it, particularly from this angle, uh, the way it's intended to be seen, it looks very natural, where everything is just fallen over and sort of seems to be resting at its gravitational normal. Uh, and that's one of the, I think, cool pieces that I'm fairly proud of having built out of just regular pieces. Because again, uh, they're back in the train level, the Hobo Colony, is another level where I explain uh, like these giant columns that have been knocked over and it's all just regular parts. There's no custom models in here at all to give off this set piece effect. It's all just little tiny pieces arranged in clever ways to make it appear as if you've got this big giant fancy smashed thing that took an artist a bunch of time to work on, but it's not. It's just regular pieces stacked creatively. All right, so let me go and edit unhide all. We are back in our level, although we're going to rehide the pink boxes. Um, those pink boxes, by the way, denote additional nav mesh and additional obstruction. They share a texture. Uh, they're not built into the texture sheet, so sometimes it can get a little disorienting in levels where there's a lot of it, and so like that extra navigation area is pink and black, but it's also cased in by walls that are obstructions that are pink and black, and you can sort of get into this sea of pink and black. And it, uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, you come out after this top area, 
and you've got a tangent over here you can come and do. Here's the new machine gun, the one that you can interact with and use. It's got like a Gatling gun on a post, as opposed to being a traditional, like, Vietnam kind of belt-fed machine gun. Um, over here, you come out. Either way, once whether you take the tangent or not, you come down this way into this lasered-off area where you fight a karate klutz, and you have to try to not get kicked into the lasers. You come out of there, over to this area, but the walkway has collapsed, and you run into a tank. You can't use it. There used to be a big artillery cannon here, but the artillery cannon uh, never quite worked right, so we pulled it out and just used the tank. And it's also the tank level, so that uh, works really well. Earlier in the level, you can see another spot over here across this. Of course, you can't travel across it, but now we finally reached the other side, and you actually get to climb across the top of some of these shelves on over to the continuation of this platform where you come down and you fight the boss and now this is one of the earliest bosses in the game that we actually built a space for and decided what we wanted him to do and ultimately we didn't end up having him do the things we wanted him to do but he's there and he's still pretty cool um, he at one point in time we wanted to have a platform over here with ranged zombies chucking grenades at you and then you could see zombies run in this side and then they would have come up a set of stair staircase that is no longer there but it came out from behind there and wrapped around and came up to here uh on the corners both corners so you'd have zombies running in this way and zombies running in this way and you'd see them down here and you could even there was turrets up here where you could maybe shoot down at them. They were never scripted to work, but they were placed there uh, in uh, preparation for having this fight. And uh, The fight works nothing like that now, but that was our original plan. Also, there's an Easter egg in this level, probably the most traditional of Easter eggs, uh, where you actually get to interact with it, and that is if you come back here after the level's over and you get into this door fast enough, there's a hidden teleporter. And that hidden teleporter will take you uh, out here to this little test lab where you get to fight your way through a bunch of amaz uh, uh, amazing head clones. And there's streamers and fireworks and all kinds of silliness. And you get a bonus amount of gold there. And then you can teleport back up and end the level. Uh, so that about wraps it up for the uh, Tanks for Nothing Part 2. Now, after these two levels were the airplane hangar levels, those two levels were cut out of the game. So you'll have to go to the secret levels to see those two. But yet, after that, we get into the science lab, and the science lab is up next.